So everybody, I'm here because I've been asked this question a lot by uh, friends and family of how much does it cost to actually fly this airplane? And is it any cheaper than flying something certified? Let's say a Piper Cherokee or a Piper 180. Well, I'm gonna answer that for you right now. All right, so let me begin. The first thing you have to think about is what does it cost to buy the plane? Certified airplanes versus experimental airplanes are all over the map. So for the sake of argument, I'm gonna use my plane here and Cherokee 180. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the procurement costs, but I think for a comparison for performance, a Cherokee 180 and the Zenith 601 are two very good candidates. Things we have to take into consideration are what does it cost to fly per hour for fuel, set aside, things like that. And also, you know, your monthly expenses and um, just things you have to take into account when you're flying and owning an airplane. So number one, the experimental, when we're talking about those, I'm talking about somebody who has the repairment certificate because that is gonna drastically change the cost of ownership. So for my plane here, since I'm the builder, I have the repairment certificate. And with that certificate, it allows me to do all my own maintenance because again, I'm the builder and it basically lets me act as an AMP for the airplane. Second, especially when you're talking about experimentals, the motor makes a huge difference. So if you're talking about somebody with a Lycoming engine, a Rotax engine, or in my case, a Corvair engine, the cost for overhaul at each one of those and what you need to set aside for that are drastically different. So for a Lycoming engine, you know, like a 235 or a 360 or a 320, you're typically gonna be budgeting between about 17 and $22,000 for the overhaul. When you look at a Rotax, it's actually more cost effective just to sometimes buy a new motor. And in that case, you're looking at about the same price, about 22 to $25,000. For a Corvair motor, because the overhaul is so inexpensive and since as the builder of the motor, you can do all of that yourself. The cost for overhaul on my engine is actually only $1,000. So when you factor that into the lifespan of the expected motor of 1,500 hours, it makes the cost really, really low. Of course, one other thing you have to consider is fuel. So I'm flying 100 low lead and out here in Arizona, especially where I'm at here at this airport, fuel cost is right around 450 a gallon and that varies depending on time of year and things like that. But right now it's right about 450. So at that, and with the Corvair engine on here, I burn between five and a half and six gallons an hour. So just for fuel, I need to budget somewhere in the neighborhood of about $23. On top of that, now if I was flying a Cherokee 180, instead of, instead of flying six gallons per hour, I'd be flying somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to nine gallons an hour. So you have to plan for that cost as well. Okay, so let's get down to the final number. When I looked at everything, the total cost for me in Arizona with fuel prices, with me with a repairment certificate, and everything to operate my plane, it was a total of $27 an hour. And that's a little higher than I'd normally think it would be because the fuel cost is a little higher right now. But annual cost set-asides and that are extremely low, again, because the engine overhaul on my plane is significantly less than you see in a certified aircraft. Now, Piper Cherokee 180. When you look at that, it, with kind of the numbers we're talking about, you'd expect a, an operational cost of somewhere between $60 and $80 an hour. That's why I think experimental aircraft, especially if you're the builder, is the way to go if you want to fly and just enjoy it. You're not necessarily trying to, you can't lease it back, but it's there for just the pure enjoyment and as I've said, for recreation and education. So I'm not an experimental snob. I do love experimental aircraft, but certified aircraft are certified for a reason. You can use them for flight instruction. You can rent them out. You can lease them back to people. So there is a place for them. They do fulfill roles and missions that you just can't do in an experimental. I mean, how many four place experimental aircraft do you see? If you want to take more than just you and a friend up, you're going to have to find one. So again, great planes, but you got to understand the cost of ownership. For me, flying this one, it's inexpensive. I have a bunch of fun. And plus, I think it's just a great plane. Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. And if you like this type of content, leave me a link below and I'll catch you guys next time.